Welcome to RVing in New England, the nation's only forum that puts you on stage with some of the biggest names in the RV industry. And now your hosts, John DiPietro and Bob Zagami. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Wednesday in New England. It's RVing in New England. And what, what do you got on the hat? Rev Group. Okay. And it's an assigned autograph with Helio Castaneris. Helio. Yeah. Helio. And you know, your, your hand is all over the autograph, John. Team Penske. Yep. So if we're going to talk about RVing, it's a and racing, we're going to talk about and racing, true racing, racing. Then, what better way to talk about the actual company that provides, um, you know, units for the dealers, not the dealers, but the drivers to go in? Because, Bob, if anybody has been to Loudon, New Hampshire, there are not many Class A hotels nearby. No, no, not at all. So, no. <laughs> not not luxury not, not luxury yeah. RV resorts yeah. either. Well, first of all, we should say hello to our audience yeah, and tell right. them what we're going to talk about tonight. Oh, Jerry Plankin on first, and uh, oh, Audrey's back, and Frank Palange. I need to ask him if Frank may have been hacked because I got a note from Frank Palange yesterday saying, "Hey, did you hear that so and so died?" and I know that so and so, but I don't think Frank knows him. So I think Frank may have gotten hacked. So anyway, but well, we're going to talk about racing. Yes, we are. We're going to talk NASCAR about in New Hampshire NASCAR. Oh, by Bob, by the way, what what John? Did, did you hear? The grand opening is tomorrow night. the the brand The brand new, largest campground in New England. It opens tomorrow night. At Loudoun, New Hampshire. At Loudoun, New Hampshire. Right. Without question, that will, without any question at all, that is be, going to be the biggest campground in New England. There will be okay. more RVs at the racetrack than there will be at, you know, any individual campground, and many of them combined. I would say that there will be more RVs in Loudoun, New Hampshire than all the other RV facilities in the great state of New Hampshire tomorrow and probably. maybe you want to add Maine in too probably yeah it's and, it's, a, um, it's a bigger event is, and you know it, it's gotten i think it's gotten a little bit bigger unlike a lot of the tracks that are that are really seeing a, a significant decrease we now that we're down to one race in new hampshire mm -hmm. uh they, they kind of both parties combined and i i was checking today uh because i was talking to uh, larry peter from campers in and they sold out this weekend. Now, some of them may not show up if it's bad weather or too hot, but even the even all their luxury suites are sold out. All their special packages for they get they had a four day package for a three day package for the two races on Saturday and the one race on Sunday and something on thir uh, Friday. Yeah, it was like ninety five dollars a ticket. It was nothing. Oh yeah, and they you know what? Yeah. They have really backed off in their ticket prices because yeah. when they had two races, and when they had fifty percent more seating than they have right now, they yeah. were really the the prices were high. Yeah, and um, you know what? NASCAR saw that they could only go to a certain amount of money before the people said, "I ain't paying that money." Well, yeah. and the product was you know a little lacking, so they had to yeah. kind of they suffered, for suffered for years. They suffered for many years. Uh, so Jerry was on first. Walter Swenson, evening from Central Mass. Central Mass. I th yeah, he lives here. Did he just post pictures of his house in Florida with a new roof? Well, maybe I, somebody else is doing it. I thought he flew down there for that. All right. Good evening, Audrey. Welcome back, Audrey. And Audrey, do I have to make a phone call for you? I will gladly make a phone call for you. Just give me the word. All right. Frank says hello. Dante's on. And uh, Dante, the, we're going to talk about um, Seacoast RV and Bobby Timmons, who happens to live in Wyndham, Maine. And he's third generation. You'll hear, uh, hear her talk about that. Um, so do you know 
Bobby Timmons, who was in that one of the pitches that we had out today. So Frank says, no, I was not hacked. Jim yeah. Convoy says, evening all. Jim's got a big week coming up. We think, at, at last word, uh, Jose and the team at RVing today will be with Jim Convoy and the England RV Roof next week. We don't know the exact days yet. And they will be filming a segment on the Flex Armor system for national TV. And Jim and his team will be the stars of the show. They will have the owners of Flex Armor there. But they will be the uh, the stars. Uh, Frank, Pilar. yeah, yeah. And you were talking about the sports writer, right, Frank? I'll have to check that out. The sports writer that we were talking about. You know, just put yes or no, sports writer. That's all. Okay. Um, there's that somebody that I know that I didn't think. Know. Yeah. Bob and John, you are awesome. But my situation ended up getting resolved. Thank you so much. Well, I'm glad to hear that. All right. Yep. But you know, you know where we are if you need us. Jim Roy, good evening. Just five minutes late. That's not bad given how busy you are up there. That's I talked to him today. Yeah. I talked to him today when I was way up in northern Maine. And um, you know what? He's got a big event coming up next week. And um, food, bands, fun, good times, et cetera, et cetera. So good. anyway. Steve Hogan is on. Say hello to your wife, Gail. Yeah. Glad everything's going well down there. So look at a couple of a uh, couple of things before we get going tonight. Uh, well, Bob, we... hold on. We're already going. We're already going. Okay. We're already going. A couple. But, right, a couple but of you things. You might want to add, say and one to add to our momentum tonight. Right. One of the things that Bob wants to talk about is, and he he was very astute the other day when he saw the weather forecast and said, "Watch out, everybody." Now, the thing with rain in New England, if you get three inches of rain in Massachusetts, in central Mass, no big deal. If you get three inches of rain in Connecticut, no big deal. But if you get three inches of rain in Vermont, it's a big deal because Vermont is mountains on both sides of the state and it pitches toward the middle and everything goes to the Connecticut River and all the other rivers that... Um, you know, that run through Vermont. So, uh, Bob, you want to take it from there after I set the table for yeah, you? Yeah, I was talking to our dealers up in Vermont today to see how everything was, and Chad Shepard reports everything is okay because he's up in South Burlington, uh, but it was really ugly with the weather. Uh, we'll have a little video later with Olivia and Meckelson's. They were pretty much okay. They, they had damage to some rental units, but we did lose – well, I, we didn't lose a dealer, but we have RV1 up in Mont uh, East Montpelier that got literally wiped out with the river. They lost everything on inventory, and they probably lost $8 million in inventory. Now, it won't take RV1 long to replace it. I do have pitches, but I don't have permission to uh, publish them yet, and it, it was bad. But fortunately, they had built a new service facility higher up a couple of years ago, just before they sold to RV1. And that was not damaged, so they can run the entire dealership out of that operation. So they're not going to skip a beat other than not being able to deliver some units for a while. But RV1 is such a large corporation. They have so many facilities here in the Northeast. They'll they'll have new stock. And on, on the bright side of a bad situation, we know, and, and most of you people know, there's yards full of inventory out in Elkhart, Indiana. And I'm sure they feel bad about the flood, but, but somebody's going to get hundreds of RVs on order that they'll start delivering probably next week or the week after. So sometimes these things have a silver lining, but we, everybody's fine at RV1. Nobody got injured, and, uh, but it is quite messy up there. Well, their, their, their main place is directly across the street from the river. Yep. And it's it's a low a low basin, and I can picture because they're just south of Montpelier, right? And Montpelier got nailed. I mean, the whole state, the cap, the state capital, is underwater. When you look at those pictures, and and, um, and did you look at the the dam? They they almost had a breach of the dam. The water rose thirty feet yesterday in the dam. It rose yeah. thirty feet. And it came to within one foot of the top of the dam, which could have breached it, but could have collapsed that wall. 
Yep. They would have had a, a an incredible catastrophe. Yep. Would no. Along those lines, Frank Polian says, we are going to Vermont on Saturday. And then Walter Swenson at the same time said, they will be very unhappy as much as four or five more inches of rain between tomorrow and Sunday. I heard that. So, Frank, are you going to be at the mountaintop or what? Because, um, you know, that's... Well, maybe, maybe he's going to East Vermont and not West Vermont. Yes, yeah. You're not going to want to be up there Thursday and Friday. They all, all the dealers said that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, whatever. But let's move on because we've got good news to report. We've got fun news to report. Fun news. Before we get back into the, the fun news stuff, let me get rid of Walter's comment there. Uh, we did have another injury to the team. Uh, Bill, Bill Sell, our backup uh, producer, who does a much better job than I do. Bill slipped at his house two, a week and a half ago. He was washing either windows or the siding of the house, and the hose got caught on the bulkhead, and the bulkhead was covered with uh, soap and water. And when Bill went to try to get it, he just took a horrible tumble onto the concrete, and he bruised his shoulder, bruised his ribs, broke his femur, had surgery last Tuesday, not yesterday, laid up for six weeks, can't drive for at least six weeks. He'll be working out of the house, and it kind of messes up. He, he runs the Natick uh, farmer's market, which is quite significant, and uh, it, he won't be on site there for, for a while, but uh, we certainly uh, want to wish Bill a quick recovery, and uh, that was... Uh, and there he is. He just nasty, showed up. A nasty fall. Yes, it was nice of him to show up at the show. Oh, check this out. Check this out. Where is he? Boom. My sister in Brattleboro and an RV owner is okay, but nobody but nearby is a mess. Got that right? Bob, John, and the rest of you, thank you for the well wishes. Watching now. All right. Glad to, glad to have you. If there's anything that we can do for you, Bill, let us know. I don't know what I could do for you down here. But while we're talking about the, the, the injury report, if you will, uh, I am down to six, six treatments. So next Wednesday night will be the evening of my last treatment. And then, so that's on Thursday the 20th and on July 21st, we are out of here and heading for Maine. And all is still well, still smiling, still happy and uh, going with that. So okay. what I want Let's go the back to Palange here for a second, because he's he's going up to Lake Champlain. That's north of, I think he's going north of Burlington to, to Apple Island. And um, Frank, are you sure? That, well, Frank, you're just going to run up 91 to 89, I presume. But yeah, was there any damage on 91? Because it sounded like, uh, well, no, Brattleboro was fine. Um, yeah, that's too far but south. It's but any, anything around Montpelier. Yeah. Well, mainly because of that valley, yeah. Yeah, well, sure. valley. I mean, you got mountains on both sides. Thank you, Walter. Well, hey, I was Frank. down on Walter. I wouldn't want to go to Vermont anytime soon, says Steve Hogan. I know. <laughs> so, there's, yeah. there's two and good two, standpoint points. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, Route 2. So right. he, there yeah. he says he's doing Apple Island in two weeks. Oh, and, and Frank is going at it. So, yeah, Frank's going today or tomorrow. So what, what, what's the big draw for uh, Apple Island, guys? Supposed to be a nice campground. Oh, a campground? Okay. Yep. Yep. But I think one of the nicest campgrounds up there is at Burlington City Park, which is right on the lake and it's right in town. And um, it's, a, it's a cool place. Has anybody been there to that campground that the city of Burlington owns? It's a pretty right. nice is place. It right on the river? Um, no, it's on the lake. On the lake, I meant. Lake Champlain, yeah. right. Yeah. 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 It comes right to the lake. So anyway, so, so, is, so um, is anybody, is anybody going to New Hampshire? Anybody, um, anybody heading up that way? Where is Ryan? Boom, boom. Oh, there you are. Okay. So let's take that off. Are you there, John? I am. Oh, looks like you were all frozen up. So the big weekend is in New Hampshire. So now I'm going I'm to tease you a little bit. 
I I have two tickets for Saturday at New Hampshire, courtesy of Campers Inn. And uh, I already know what my parameters are so that you so that you don't think that I'm gonna wait and read the comments, but there's, I have two tickets and then I have an autograph. I don't have them personally here. Larry's gonna get them out. Uh, but the, uh, the second pri uh, prize would be a, an autographed picture of uh, Daniel Hemrick and Justin Haley who drive the college racing cars with the campers in colors on them. And I have that also. So I, and I already got a slide made up of the winning criteria, but I'm not going to show it to you now. But what I am going to show it to you now, if it's good timing, I had a chance to talk to Larry Peter, who is the Southeast Regional Manager for Campers Inn RV. And he is, I, I call him Mr. NASCAR within Campers Inn. He is the man responsible for the entire NASCAR program that Campers Inn runs it. In fact, when he tried to sell the concept to uh, Ben and Jeff Hirsch, they said, you want to do what? With what? But he convinced them. And uh, they're, they're not quite NASCAR lovers yet. They haven't learned the language yet, but they uh, fully endorsing the program and it's been very successful for them. So I have to do this a different way tonight and I'm sure it's going to work just fine because it ran over. Did you know there's a 10 minute limit, John? On... Uh... Oh, on here? Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so as I mentioned in the show earlier, we've got an interview with Larry Peter, the VP of the Southeast region of Campers Inn and the man who has the title as Mr. NASCAR within <laughs> Campers Inn. So Larry, welcome to the show. We're doing a taping because you've got a busy weekend with the track up here in New Hampshire, which is right behind me. That, uh, that's New Hampshire Motor Speedway. So tell us a little bit about your involvement with NASCAR if we get some people on the show tonight that may not be aware of it. Well, uh, good morning from the tape world here. Yes. Um, look, we're ecstatic about Loudon coming up this weekend. Uh, you know, one of our big partnerships with Colleg Racing is uh, – allows us to pick and choose kind of when we dabble our feet into the markets. And obviously New Hampshire uh, is one of our best markets in the country. Uh, we love Loudoun. Uh, we have two stores up in that market in Kingston and Merrimack. We have a third store just opened in Chichester. Um, so we're ecstatic to show that off this weekend for NASCAR. On the track, we're going to have a couple of different cars running both Saturday and Sunday with Colleg. Um, you know, Daniel Hemrick is eighth in points in the Xfinity. Um, he's going to be running the 11 car for us on Saturday. Um, and then Sunday, we got Justin on the 31. Um, that's going to be real fun coming off his momentous run at Atlanta last week. He's uh, 21st in the points in the cup. So he's got a four or five races left to get in the playoffs. And there's no doubt in our mind that he'll get there. Yeah. And, and this is a really big weekend in New Hampshire. It's the only NASCAR race. We used to have two, but now we only have one. But on Saturday, you get the Xfinity and the Wayland Modified, which is a tremendous race, draws a lot of local talent. And I, and, and Sunday with the Cup Series, they'll, they'll kill it. And, you know, it we I used to write stories about NASCAR where the average racetrack would have 10,000 campers. And there's a, there's a large camping area up at, uh, up at Loudoun. So folks who are heading up to the track can stop at Chichester and pick up their last-minute supplies or any any. Uh, things that they need to do uh yeah absolutely uh aaron hirsch is our gm there at the chichester store um you know they got a full service uh center there full accessory and parts center there so anything uh the campers need going into the track or coming out of the track after the weekend uh, we certainly are right there conveniently located to take care of all of those needs well and, and you mentioned the weekend because we all know that when campers go to races they don't go for the race they go for three or four days they, they'll be moving in today with the haulers yeah i think we mentioned to you the last time we talked um yeah the, the beauty of nascar is it is camping right i mean it is that's that's most people's away uh is their vacations are to nascar and you know you tailgate to a football game for three or four hours you tailgate for a nascar race for four or five days so yes um uh, today, Wednesday is, is move in day. Um, so the Harlows are all be arriving. Um, it, it's going to be a spectacle up there. 
Yeah. And, you know, look, NASCAR is a business and it's a shame that Loudon only has one race. Um, it used to have two. Uh, I think you might see that come back in the future. You never know. Um, it all depends on, you know, the demographics that show up. The race is sold out, uh, which does play uh, into Loudon's favor in the long run. It is a, a, a different track, right? You know, everybody likes the flat tracks. Um, so Martinsville and Loudon have a lot of similarities. Uh, so the guys that, uh, that run well will run well at both places. And that should fill the seats. I mean, it's great racing. Uh, most of our fans watched uh, Atlanta last weekend. Both those races were, you know, edge of your seat, highly competitive races. Um, and now we go from the, uh, you know, super speedway uh, of Atlanta to, uh, you know, Loudon. So Imagine one extreme to the other. Magic mile. You know, one of the other routines up there, Larry, I don't, and I don't know if they do this at other tracks, but uh, because I've gone to so many races up there, one of the big rituals is when the race is over, when they're coming out of, this, out of the speedway and heading down, I forget the, the route number, but all the people line, you would think it's the July 4th parade. They get their lawn chairs, they get their their drinks, they line that road all the way down. And, and the drivers will give them a good honk on, on the way out. So there's the tribute to the drivers and that's pretty and cool. Oscar heading out. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I've, I've never uh, made that drive personally. Uh, nobody cares if I'm at the race watching. So uh, <laughs> good for those guys. Um, yeah, I mean, they're all going they're all going back to Concord to fly out. So good. now when, when you're at the track dur during the race, you you as Larry Peter, you as campers in, are you – in the box behind with the big guys in the crew chief? Are you in a special suite? Are you down in the uh -huh. pit? Where do you so, go? You know, the, the, the best part of the races for us is uh, we do take a bunch of winners. We do give away a lot of tickets, um, social media at some of the stores. Um, so a, a big portion of my time is, is spent uh, giving tours of the garage um, our meet and greets that we have with all of our brand ambassadors. Um, like this weekend, we have our brand ambassador, Harrison Burton, um, and, and obviously Daniel Hemrick. So we have meet and greets with those, uh, those drivers. So, you know, we really want to take advantage of allowing the access that we get to NASCAR as a pass through to not only some of our employees, but um, our winners of our contests as well. So that's what I spend most of my time doing. Um, I will tell you this. Uh, I very rarely sit on the pit box um, just because there's so much moving and shaking. And, and quite frankly, the pit box is the worst seat in the house because you only see what's right in front of you. You can't see around the track. Uh, but the action was so good with the call of guys last week that, you know, Justin was running up front for almost 80 laps that uh, I didn't get off the pit box. So it was the first time I've ever watched an entire race from the pit box because uh, I was too nervous to move. <laughs> uh, you know, superstition, right? Great, um, great. Well, but that's that's kind of how the race goes for me. But you get the best view of the uh, pit stops. Yes, yes. Now you do and, get and, uh, and and talk talk about that a little bit. We'll put a little business in here. The importance of the NASCAR team and the importance of the campers in team. It's not one person; it's the company. Is that sure. is that one of the things that interests you and in, in why yeah. the campers in is invested in NASCAR? What, what's hilarious, uh, you know, obviously for people that don't speak NASCAR, Bob, is NASCAR is a team sport. Um, and that's one of our big core values is teamwork. Uh, it's actually number two behind integrity. Um, not one person can sell or fix an RV. Um, and not one race car driver can win a race without his team. So, um, you know, there's seven guys that go over the wall. Uh, they change the tires. They provide fuel into the car. Uh, you know, they control the track bar and, and some other adjustments on the car. Um, and without those, the driver can't win. So teamwork is imperative. Um, that that 10 to 12 second pit stop really can make or break um, the speed of the car. So you can have the fastest car on the track. If, if you can't change the tires, then you're not going to make it right. And that, that parlays into our world. Right. Our, our matchmakers um, are very specialized, but they don't know at all and they need direction. So whether it's our, our sales managers, our general sales managers or our GMs, 
you know, everybody's involved in the process to make sure that we not only identify um, the right RV for our clients, but make sure it's budget friendly as well. So teamwork plays both sides. That's part of the big synergy that we have with NASCAR. Uh, not one person can do this whole job by themselves. That, that, that's true. And, you know, when we look at, go back to the pit stops, you know, I can't get out of the car and open the gas tank in 12 seconds, but they can change four tires and fill the gas tank in 12 seconds. Uh, I'm going to let you get back to work, Larry. We're talking to Larry Peters, uh, Senior VP of the Southeast Region for Campers in RV and the NASCAR man at Campers in. And we are going to give away two tickets to the Saturday Xfinity race. And we're going to give away an autographed photograph of Hemrick and Justin Hayes, right? Yeah, so we... We'll, we'll give away to your viewers, Bob, a, a, a set of grandstand tickets. We have two tickets left for the Saturday event, which not only gets them into the Xfinity race, uh, but also the, the wheel and modified race that follows right after. So it's really a two for one on Saturday. And then we have some uh, poster like uh, pictures with both the cars. So we'll have both the drivers sign those. We'll give one of those away to your viewers as well, Bob. Appreciate the support. Yeah, and and for our fans that are out there, you know, one of the things Campers in is considering is is the diecast models that a lot of people collect. So, uh -huh. how many of our fans put a little note down below there would buy a Campers in diecast car to add to your NASCAR collection? They Larry, are sharp. Yeah, Larry. Best of luck up here in New Hampshire this weekend. Uh, we'll be watching for both drivers. Maybe you'll do a double header and get two of them in victory lane, one on Saturday and one on Sunday. That sounds fantastic, Duster. We're trophy hunting with Colleg Racing. All right, Larry, thank you very much. Thanks, Bob. That's a nice job. An exciting weekend. Now, let me tell you it is secret because today I had to do that interview early this morning because he was leaving to go play golf. And Larry and golf. Jeff Kirsch we're playing in a colleague invitational in Ohio today. And they, they, they were teamed up and I'll be interested to hear the reports, but they're playing professional with them was John Daly. Huh. So, 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 so I said to Larry, I said, you know, if you took the length of your shot and the length of Jeff Hirsch's shot and combined them, John Daly would still out distance you with his shot. But can you can you imagine the stories that'll come out of that eighteen hole round? Now, were they already out in Ohio? Uh, yeah, he had he had gone up to Ohio yesterday, oh. so then he leaves yeah, so Ohio. So Ben didn't have to fly him out. Yeah, so he leaves Ohio and then comes uh, comes up here to uh, to New Hampshire. So ben, ben didn't have to fly him out, as as he said. So the eleventh comment is going to get the autographed Hemrick and Haley photograph. And then doubling his number, which would be 22, the 22nd comment will get two tickets to N New Hampshire Motor Speedway for Saturday. And that, that is two races. That's the Xfinity race and the this in fact let's do this in real time. I don't th I don't think you can see the comments, but John can kind of count along with the one, two, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you were number eight, Frank, so you, you didn't win it. But nine, 10, 11. Jim Roy. And Jim Roy is the winner of the autographed photo, which would look nice hanging on the wall at Silver Moose Restorations. And so if I move down from Jim, 11... 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 12, 9, 19 is Frank, 20, 20, Audrey. Audrey, Audrey Foley Egan. You had two, two tickets for Saturday. And if, and if you don't want them, John will be glad to take them. But go over, go over the racetrack, have a good time, and let me know if you're going because I'll see if I can get, get you some extras from uh, Cameras Inn while you're over there. So that was NASCAR for there. And that was, we also had 
Any any comments that I'm missing, John? We should check comments in between. No, we're good. Before um, we do that. No, you know what? We had it. We did have a nice one. Just getting off topic for a little bit. Mar Mark Lebrecht's parents. Um, Mark wanted to thank us for thank you for sharing the news of his parents' deaths yeah, in the last couple of weeks. Very, very unfortunate. And Mark, if you if you're still on, I I just didn't want to bother you this week, but I'm happy that you're on because it's racing. If you are still racing the dragsters, uh, just drop me a note in here so we can recognize your contributions to the racing community. Because I think the last time that we talked that you were still out there racing and have been racing for a long time. So just, just drop us a note there and uh, let us know how that is, uh, is going for you. But uh, our sincerest respects on the loss of mom and dad and in the same week. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. But they're together in heaven this week, so... Best of luck to you. May they rest in peace. So, um, so we also did have a conversation with Olivia Meckelson. Olivia is the third generation Meckelson, and you'll hear some interesting comments. Uh, and you may have read them in there, but uh, I'm going to go through the video. Then I'm going to tell you something else about them. So let's let me do this. Let me kill that. And let me go so down. Bob, let me just, before you go, go into that, I just, you know, w while we're on the topic of, of yeah. NHIS or New Hampshire, if, if Audrey, if one of Audrey's people goes, Audrey, if it's a two o'clock race, don't leave wherever you are at, at 11 o'clock and expect to be there. You need to leave. You, if, they, if they're coming from Worcester, they need to leave Worcester at seven in the morning. Yeah. Have, breakfast, get there for nine. have breakfast down the street from the track. Right. Yeah. Because it it's, it's an absolute horror show. Right. Because it's a two lane um, road going in there. But yeah. if you wait. Route eight, Bob. It's route eight. Route eight? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, have breakfast, then you can gauge how, how, big, how long the traffic is. Because it's a great time, but it's a rotten time if you go to try to drive to the race for the day and drive back because it's crazy. You need to go a couple of days before, stay a day later. And um, there is no shortage of people that want to have fun. Yep. While you're at a track. And the, and the beauty is, as Larry said, you're only eight miles from campus in Chichester. So if you need right. stuff on the way up or right. you a, a quick repair, drop in there right. and see if they can help you out. Exactly. Let's, let's see what my friend Olivia is up to. Is this the right one? Yes, it is. All right. We got Olivia Mickelson coming to you live via video. So, uh, Olivia, uh, I wanted to talk to you, especially because this is our kind of our NASCAR motorsports show. And I know earlier this year, you did some things with Thunder Road. So explain your activity with motorsports. Yeah, so we've been a, a sponsor at Thunder Road Speedway for um, about 60 years. Um, we always sponsor the Memorial Day race. Uh, so this year was actually the 60th anniversary of that race. It's a local racetrack that's right here in um, Barry, Vermont, and uh, we love supporting it. We uh, do, it, it, we have a really good relationship with them um, dating back a long time. We do um, like the winter circle. So every week um, there's picnic tables in the track and um, the winner gets to park next to it. And there's, you know, signage that has Mackelson RV, you know, winter circle on it. Um, so it's, we have a really good relationship with the local track here. And uh, your, your founders were there also, right? Yeah, my grandparents, John and Grace Mackelson, um, were able to be at the race. They're both going to be 100 in September and October. So we're excited about that. That's that's, that's fantastic. What a great legacy. So so the track, so you've been working with the track for 60 years. And, and what anniversary is this for Mackelson RV? Uh, it's the, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the, so it's, well, it's a little bit less than that, but they were involved before it was an RV dealership as to Fanny Motor. So my grandfather sold cars before. Um, so Mackelson RVs, I think on its technically 56th or 7th year. Um, but they've been involved for the full 60, but it was under a different um, different business name. All right. Before I, before I let you go, I know you had bad weather up there this week. I'm sure people want to know how you fared in the uh, flooding in Vermont. Yeah, so we were kind of on an island, thankfully. <laughs> so the river uh, went around us. It kind of encroached a little bit, but not into any of our inventory or anything. So 
we're in really good shape, thankfully. Um, the rental fleet stayed good. That's the part of the property that's closer to the river. So um, the Renewski River is roaring still. A lot of people are displaced, but um, we were fortunate where we didn't um, get hit by that. Super. But a lot of Vermont did. Well, we're so. glad to see you supporting the local track and getting involved with some of these motorsports and uh, keep up the great work. And we'll talk to you a little bit down the road. That sounds good, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Can you can you imagine her her grandfather and grandmother are going to turn a hundred in the fall? So it, it it sunk in when I was doing the video and I, I grandfather him. or great grandfather? No, her grandfather because Bruce is her father. Yeah, Connie, Bruce and Connie run it now. Connie is Bruce's sister. So when John and Grace passed it on down, they passed it to the brother and sister, which was Bruce and Connie, and then. Olivia and Jenner and two other kids are Bruce's kids, and they they'll, okay. they'll be the next generation coming up. She just got her master's degree in marketing from I think it was Southern New Hampshire uh, this year, so she's very active in their social media now, doing some nice changes to their programs that they have up there. So then I had this crazy thought, and I called her back later on this afternoon. I want to do, we want to do. You don't know this yet, but you want to do it also, John. We want to do a show and have the three generations on the show because they're still in very, very healthy for, for 99 years old. Yeah. So I, I want to have a show with John and Grace, Bruce and Connie and Olivia and Jenna. They're the two that are primarily working in the dealership because I know we have never done that. And I'm not sure how many shows there are in the industry that we're going to be able to put six three generations, around, three generations, yeah. six of them around the table. Yeah. And on, well, you, you certainly can, are contemporary with the people that are 100 years old. I hang with the kids a little bit more. <laughs> so I'm, from I'm, that perspective, I'm, I'm I'm getting close to them. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's just check and see if we had uh, see if Mark, some comments. Steve Hogan I'm says, "Stay away from me." Because I want to see if uh, uh, Audrey says, "Wow, let me check with my people." She's got people, John. Right. All, right. All well, the is, whole fam the whole gang is going up to New Hampshire. Well, that's right. The the people gang, yeah. They're gonna be not that far. See but, um, but Roy Steve Roy Hogan's is, yeah. pays to be Jim late. Roy. <laughs> yeah. Tell and Tony's about, here. I don't know. Uh, Tony, where are you at? Tony Where are you is, at, Tony? I and was Kevin. I was just thinking about Kevin. you. I now I assume, John, he he meant you. He was thinking about you. <clears throat> but more than likely, he was thinking about me and the treatments to see what's what. So. Okay, Horky, really late tonight. Sorry, guys. Well, it's Wednesday. It's summer. So is it your golf league? Yeah, you must be out playing golf on Wednesday nights, Horky. And and when do, when do you put uh, Roman into your golf team out there? He's got a – Roman hey. is 10. I think he's about the same age as Bobby and uh, a tremendous golfer up and coming. Hey. Here's one thing I found out today talking with Jim Roy. On Wednesday night up in Monmouth, Maine, they have their local cruise night. Right. There. It probably starts at 5 o'clock. Yeah, he's supposed but Jim to says we leave a little bit early to always catch the show. And you know what? Yeah. We've said it before, and we'll continue to say it. This show is not a show without our audience. Our great audience really makes makes part of it. We and I need to tell Kevin that we couldn't when even we were in Elkhart – a couple weeks ago, sorry to miss him, but we did make it to sports time. And my wife and grandkids love the place, sports time. Okay, Audrey, I think, oh no, I guess he probably means that for I see, I, Audrey, I think Steve means that for you, which your big diesel pusher, but uh, bring a generator and fill your tanks if you're going to Vermont. Well, I think maybe he means if, you, if you're going to, oh, Vermont. Oh, oh, because of the flooding. Yeah, I, yeah. The gas stations yeah. are out, the Internet's out. It's bad. I mean, you know, as close as we are to them, we have no idea how bad it really is up there. And yeah. to our friend Tim, camping off grid in Derby, Vermont, Lavender Essentials Farm. Is that it? Well, you're off grid, so that's not. Wait is a that minute. a harvest host location, Tim? And how is that, is that way up? Is that side? way up, Tim? Derby, Vermont. I don't know. Because we were up there. It's up around Newport, if I recall, right? Almost on the Canadian border. Yeah. If that's the one. I'll have to check. I'll have to take a look on that. 
Swenson but we State. stayed at a lavender farm. That no, Donnelly, oh, you stayed there, John? We stayed at a lavender farm that was a, um, it was a, it was a harvest host. Let me just check where uh, Derby, Vermont is. Yeah. I'll be able to tell. All this went to no, no normally too hot, but might be cooler, humid, and raining on Sunday. I'm not sure. Well, it's certainly not cooler in Florida. It has been last week and a half, 95 every day with a heat index between 107 and 113. You walk out the door, it's like walking into a sauna. So I, I don't oh, yeah, like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, but, that Derby place, that's right on the Canadian border. That's a great place. There's a windmill up on top, and uh, it's right in Newport. And um, who is that, Tim? Yeah, it was Tim. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we've stayed there. It is a Harvest Host. And it's a great. Um, it's beautiful because if you look out one side of the mountain, you see Canada. And if you look out the other side, you see Vermont. And if you look out to the right, I believe you can see um, New Hampshire. Hmm. Audrey says so, they are going to Northampton, New Hampshire with the kids yeah. and the grandsons. Just drove through there today. Yeah. Do you, yeah. Audrey, when you go up in that area, do you get your fried seafood from, what's the name of the place, John? Plum something. I can oh, never remember the name. Beach in, Plum. Uh, they have a place in, what's the name? Beach Plum. Beach Plum, right. Yeah. Great. Great fried seafood if you're down that way. RV Love. Well, hello. Now look at this. Oh, side Julie, conversation. Julie, well, wait a minute. Did, is that her first comment? Oh No, no she, she said did. something before. She called you a legend. No, but here Burlington is a cool town. Oh, did she say some other stuff too? Yeah, yeah. She called you a legend. A legend. Yeah, yeah. In, my own, in my own mind. Ronnie Millsap mm. had a great... Actually... Roy Orbison had that. No, Ronnie Millsap had it first. Millsap and then uh, Roy Orbison did it. Bill Sell, 89, 89 is mostly open. The bridges are the concern. Yeah, wow. Well, mostly open is not a good phrase. There you go. I, I you know, I, I'm really falling behind because I should have checked the weather and the road forecast with Walt the Swenson during the show. So he's, he's updating you with the information that's good gail that's good okay oh there she is bob you are a legend looking good and your energy is amazing yep it amazes me too julie and julie and mark uh we are going to be doing a show with julie and mark um hopefully maybe next week but julie's in charge of the campers and the campgrounds out of that eclipse in Oregon in October. She's working with the group out there and she's going to update us on that and reservations and the excitement of a full eclipse. We will have more on that. And it, it may in fact be next. I have to get back to her tomorrow to figure out what I'm, what we're doing next Wednesday night, John, but uh, that one's, that one's coming up pretty quickly. Uh, Audrey says, Bob and John, thank you so much for the offer of the tickets to the race, but we can't make it. While you are still online, please offer those tickets to others that might be interested. I'd trade for those matchbox cars for the grandson if possible. Well, they're, they're, Campers Inn is still debating whether or not they're going to buy them. It's, it's a hefty buy-in. Uh, you have to buy 500 of them, and, but they're getting a lot of pressure for them. A lot of their uh, customers want them. But uh, I'll, I'll get you one. If they go ahead and do it, I'll, I'll make sure that I get you one already. So we'll worry about that. All right. So we have two tickets to Nat, uh, Loudon on Saturday. So put a note in if you are eligible to go. And we, we may have to go you know, after the show and take those that are eligible. But since you're here, you came to the show, you're one of our big fans. If you can go on Saturday, put a note in there and we'll draw later on to see who it is. So the, it, it will stay within the family of people that are here tonight. How's that? That makes sense, John? It makes sense, yeah. Just, you know what? But don't take them if you can't go. That, right, exactly. If you, if you, you can't know, go, don't, don't just, do it. Uh, so, okay, so there's the, uh, the website, eclipsefest23.com. 
And uh, <laughs> Julie says, sorry, I can't make it. Well, you're in Colorado, so that's that's probably a good reason. Yeah, um, but she left now. <laughs> well, we'll we'll see. But we'll we'll have them on the show to talk about eclipses. I've I've never seen one. So let's go back to our interviews because another one that is supporting local people. This is a great story. Is uh, Seacoast RVs up in Saco, and I'll let Brittany Creamer, who is the sales manager up there, tell the story. All right, another one of our dealers, Nerve to Dealers, that's involved with motorsports is Seacoast RVs up in Saco, Maine. And I've got Brittany Creamer with me right now. So we wanted to do this this afternoon rather than make her stay up late tonight to uh, be in the show. But Brittany, tell us about your relationship with Mr. Timmons and Seacoast RVs. Sure. Um, so Bobby Timmons is a good friend of mine. Um, I've known him for about 15 years. Um, I met through racing, through his sister, um, and he's local. He's from Wyndham, Maine. He's a third generation um, super modified driver. Um, he has, um, you know, traveled all over New England racing with the 350 Smack Series and New England Super Modified Series. Uh, so one day, Kenny and Amanda, who are the owners here at Seacoast, um, I decided to take them along on a trip up to Wiscasset to watch him race, um, as I do almost every Saturday. And uh, they watched it. And, you know, super modifieds are very different than any other race car you see. They've got a big wing on them and they go very fast. Um, so they were very impressed with, you know, his racing and him as a person. And they kind of fell in love with watching it and, you know, how he performs and, that's kind of where that relationship started between Seacoast and Bobby. Well, and you know, it's, it's true that a lot of the people in the cup series, a lot of the drivers in the cup series, the Xfinity series, they all started out on the Saturday night dirt tracks or Friday night dirt tracks. A lot of them yep. in New England, Joey Logano came from Connecticut and worked his way all the way up to the championship. So, and these, and there are, you know, motorsports enthusiasts who will tell you the modifieds are probably the best, the best bang for your buck. You go out for, five bucks and have a beer and a hot dog and see all your neighbors and, and it's fun. But I understand that he's not the first Timmons to be raised and modified. He is not. Um, he is a third generation. Um, so it started with his grandfather, um, you know, Bob, Bob senior. Um, he raised super modifieds. Um, and then obviously his dad tagged along and became a, a you know, a competitor as well. Um, and, you know, Bobby and his sister grew up in that environment. And uh, so Bob, um, he had raced other things before he started out in go-karts back in 2001 and raced legends and then went into fendered cars, which are super late models. Um, and his dream was to always run a super modified like his dad and his grandfather. Um, so him and his dad, they're fabricators. Um, so they built um, both the cars that they have now, the small block and the big block, super modified. Um, and now they're out, you know, living their dreams of the father, son out there, you know, doing the doing the super modified racing. All right. And before we close it out, I understand that he has found his way to victory lane at least once already this year. Yes. Yes. He's done very well. Um, he races pretty regularly at Star Speedway in Epping, New Hampshire. Um, they have a large um, race at the beginning of every year. Um, it's the Bob Weber Senior Memorial. Um, he used to run the racetrack and now his son puts on this race for the 350 Supers every year, um, which is one of their biggest races of the year. And he was fortunate enough to win that race. He had a very That's outstanding great. performance. So That's great. That's Brittany, great. thank you. And, and thanks for your support of these motorsports and, uh, getting Seacoast RVs involved. So some some enthusiasts, when they come up to buy their new motorhome or trailer, will ask for Brittany so you can talk about NASCAR and Xfinity and, and yes. the Modified Series. Yeah, I'll talk about racing anytime if somebody wants to come talk to me. It's All right. It's you, and I will talk, you and I will talk about it next time I see it. Yes, awesome. Thanks, Bob, for having me on. Thank you. Hey, she knows her racing. Does she ever? Yeah. She knows and, her uh, racing. Small block, they, big block, uh, yeah. modifieds, fabricators. Wow. I'm they, impressed. Uh, they had impressed. Uh, 
they had Bobby at their open house. Now you you had filmed the day before, but he was you you filmed on Saturday, I think. But uh, he was there on Sunday uh, on on the modifieds, and and that is that is big business up there. I mean, for as I said, for a cheap date, let me tell you, you it, it's like most of them are five bucks, and you know. Three or four bucks for a hot dog. You can you can go for twenty bucks. You can go out and watch the races all night right, long. Right. It's the a shame they lost that racetrack, Beach Ridge. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's supposed to be a Walmart thing. No, or I think it's going to be an Amazon warehouse. I'll have to check when I get up there. It hmm. should be built by now. There was well, rumors that it was going to be an Amazon distribution center. It wouldn't surprise me if they didn't build it because um, that one in Elkhart, across from the Hall of Fame, is not functioning, and they really? built it. A giant one in Worcester that's not functioning, and they're not going to activate it. I thought I thought that one that's the, the one down the street from Sherry. I thought that was open. Oh, no, that's that's, that's that's FedEx. Yeah, that's FedEx. Yeah, the Walmart one where the mall was. Oh, and Walter must Walter would know all that stuff about what's coming and going. But you know, hey, another company that um, I don't know if you had a chance to talk to that is involved in uh, sponsorship of NASCAR products is um nascar events is longview and um that's right i forgot you know, him yeah they're big sponsors over at stafford motor speedway right. we had him and then our friends at dometic they're not doing it this year sarah doba we had her yep. on the show yeah so we may have to do a second uh, nascar show you're right yeah i want to try to get to a show in the second half of the year when it gets warmer i mean when it gets cooler what um, what track? To get to a show, get to an event, get to a race. Maybe yeah. uh, maybe Lime Rock. I don't know when that's coming up, but that's a different different kind really? of race. Is your brother still going to the short tracks? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. He goes right around there. So anyway, did, did but, you remind him? See, I probably would have included Longview if Michael had done the video. If he with Longview talking about the driver that they sponsor, it went it went right out of my mind. So don't don't blame me. I'll just blame Michael John. If he had done the Todd Emerson interview, he could have been the third person in the booth. He could have been the lead on our our racing coverage for the year. We yep. could have got him credentials for Daytona. We could you know. But hey, he expected me to do all the work for him. But that's not how it works. So. Not at, no, we, we we have enough work already. Right, exactly. Let's exactly. let's make sure we're not leaving right. any, anybody out here, John. We <laughs> yeah. Anybody? Just, we get any, uh, any cool takers on those? Uh, I seventy last week. Love yep. the paint job. Yeah, they do a great job. They do that a great a, job on the paint, paint jobs. Job. Yeah. You know whether it's the big ones or the um, or the. <laughs> Or the class C, or the C's, or the super C's, but they do a great job. Okay, so, this, this is this is a sales tip for you folks. Listen to Walter; he's cleaning out the Cedar Creek fifth wheel this weekend in prep for selling, hoping for not too much rain here. So if if you know Walter, and we kid, we kid Walter a lot on the show, but he's very detailed. He's very project meticulous. Oriented. Meticulous. Uh, meticulous. That That is one beautiful fifth wheel. He's going to change up his uh, type of RV, but whoever buys that is going to get an exceptional pre-owned Cedar Creek fifth wheel. And right. if you need if you need information, we'll put it in. And, and Ryan, I did uh, suggest to Walter that he give you a call because I know you sell a few uh, units on consignment. And, and what's better than buying a uh, pre-owned RV from the technician who checked it out and who's going to service it later on. But right. uh, we'll see what happens. So if somebody is uh, yeah. in the market and if, there. And if Walter sells it to somebody and there's some things wrong, we'll just put Walter's phone number up on the screen here. Right, we'll just put it up and on the bill plan on, on 290 and 295. But, Tony is know, in New Mexico for a few more weeks. That That's home, isn't it, uh, Tony? In, in the He's got a house in New Mexico, and then he's going to hit the road with, not his, there. with his Rockwood Mini. Yeah. Oh, by the way, oh, yeah, Ryan said Derby is a Canadian line, and I've been there, and that is one beautiful – I think I might, might have already said this. It's a beautiful park. So who was it going there? Tim? Uh, Tim's RV, right? 
Yeah, yeah Tim. Tim Christensen's yeah, off grid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a cool place. So right. normally, uh, I, had, I had some news items for the beginning, and we're running out of time. But let me quickly tell you what the three news items were because we were got right into. The, are we keeping you up to Petro? I'm sorry. Yes. Pat Time. Yes, I drove 400 miles today. I'm tired. Okay, all right. So uh, anybody who wants to do international travel, Caravan Salon, August 25th to September 3rd, Dusseldorf, Germany. It's the most incredible RV show in the world, and I'll I'll just leave it there. It is like nothing you've ever experienced, and nothing that you will experience. And they got 15 buildings at the Dusseldorf campground. One of them features that whole travel and nature segment that they talk about. The destinations. They talk about the destinations on where they go. Uh, Truma and Coast, which builds the Aero Build all electric trailer, is going to do a short East Coast trip, leaving North Carolina, pretty much staying in the North Carolina area, towing the Coast all electric. And, and the importance of an all electric trailer like this is when you have an electric, let's say you're pulling an electric truck, the Lightning with 300 mile range. Once you put it on there, you go down to 150 miles. With an electric trailer generating its own power for the wheels, the 300-pound range stays at 300. It does not de degrade the towing capacity. So Truma is going to be doing that, and it's outfitted with the Truma Aventa air conditioner. And kudos to NRVTA down in Texas. Stephanie Henson right there is in charge of all their business development and programs. She's Todd Henson's wife, and they were just awarded permission, or they were just added. They've added a category on their in the East Texas West Workforce Development Board's Economic Development Committee. They've added the title of RV technician, and that means that they can get funding for RV training for people that want to go and veterans, and the that. Texas program is reciprocal, reciprocal to a lot of other states. You can see in the second paragraph, Oregon has just been waiting for them to be added to the ETPL in Texas so they can begin sending students to our school. So other states can send students to that school based on this program. So other states are there. So that's going to give us a lot more technicians. And true, a lot of them will stay down in Texas and, and maybe in the South. But that's, that's a a monumental decision and tremendous uh, job by Stephanie because it gives other states now a model. So if you're working with other states, you know people who are in other states, you can point to Texas who has authorized RV technicians as a critical career field and opened up training for funding and what have you. So other yep. than that, not a lot going yep. on. Man. Well, Bob, you've been to you've been to Dusseldorf, so you know, you know what it's like. So now Walter says he's moving to a Class C Sprinter based. He's looking at twenty six. I don't know if you'll find twenty six. That might be the maximum end because that Dynamax I had was about twenty five, and I think it's because of the way the Sprinter frame is that you can't have too much of an overhang on it. Etc. But most of the I, I, wonder, um, I wonder though there was I saw something posted today from Leisure Travel that was talking about a new Sprinter chassis or modification. It was called the thirty five hundred MH. So I got to do some homework. Uh, there may be a modification to the Sprinter chassis that will allow yeah. some of these manufacturers to go to twenty. I haven't seen it either, John. I, I've seen the twenty fours, but yeah. there may be something on the yeah. twenty six. Yeah, yeah, it could be. The thing is, um, you know, the way the wheels are set, you don't want to have too much of a swing on the back anyway. Yeah. Every time you go around a corner, especially coming in and out of gas stations where people kind of leave their uh, mark on yep. the side of the gas pump, that type of thing. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, Walter, welcome to the club. And um, <laughs> yeah, you know you'll find that those sprinters, those new sprinters, and again, the new Dynamax that we had was on it. They drive more like a car than a truck. And with all due respect to the Fords and the Dodges, they're still a truck drive. But when you get into a Mercedes um, 2500 or 3500, they are absolutely amazing. They're steering. You can do the one hand, one finger steering and um, they're quiet. And 
um, the one that we had, the, the Dynamax one, had very little sway when we were passed by trailer trucks. Indeed. So they hold, hold the road very well. Hey, Jason Cole, um, thank you for joining us. What, what, and, did, what did he join at the 59th minute? Yeah. He joins it. Yeah. He joins well, it. If he had joined us at seven o'clock, we wouldn't have said anything about it. He, he joins at eight. Jason, we start the show at seven. He's in central time. He's on oh, central time. You, uh, hey, Jason, Jason, are you going up with um are you going up with Palange? Who's Palange going with? He, he's got a bunch of he said we're going with a whole bunch of people. I don't know. Uh Jim, thank you, Jim Convoy. Uh he's got oh thank you, Steve Hogan. But Walter's fifth wheel has the Flex Armor Lifetime Guarantee roof system on it, never to leak. So you get Walter Swenson, all his knowledge, all his creativity, all his meticulousness, and you get a Flex Armor roof courtesy of New England RV Roof and Jim Convoy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Stephen, for picking up on that. Let me let me ask Jason. Jason, are you planning on going up to uh, twelve others? Wow, that's quite a group. Jason, are you planning on going out to going up to eighty nine and then across up ninety three to eighty nine in New Hampshire? Or are you going out the Mass Pike to uh, ninety one and going up that way because um, um, the traffic? Yes, yes. Okay, Jason, I gave you two options and you say yes. <laughs> well, maybe. Yeah. I'm just maybe you warning you. The, maybe you should have stopped after the first one, 93 okay. to 89, he says. Well, just get ready for traffic because I was up that way today and it was like a holiday weekend. It was on Wednesday at eight o'clock in the morning, especially 495 to get up to 93 was which insane. is the way I'm sure which is, which is the way they'll go. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Yeah, right. There's right. really 495 no to have fun right. up there. So we, we might have Julie and Mark on next week talking about eclipses. I don't know yet, but when I get it all figured out, we'll let you folks know. And thank you very much. We had a tremendous audience tonight. Uh, can't do it without you. We'll see you down the road. Thank you for everything. And have a great day, everybody. Catch up to you later. See you all. This edition of RVing in New England was a presentation of the New England RV Dealers Association. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.